Hello, I'm Jim Grant, welcoming you to another very important program at KNXT, a special presentation. Homelessness is an issue that is not only in the news sometimes, it's a reality all the time. For that very reason, we have assembled a panel today that is committed to the solution by way of awareness about this social problem that is facing us every day in our lives. To my left is Bill Simon, who is the chair of the Bishop John Steinbach Homeless Advocacy Committee. In the middle of our group is Pastor Jimmy Foote, who is the pastor of the Breaking Free Revival Center and a member of this committee as well. And finally, there's Jim Nelson, a member with Bill at the St. Paul Catholic Newman Center and a member of the Bishop's Advocacy Committee. I'd like all three of you to please tell us briefly what it is that keeps you passionately committed to the issue of homelessness here in Fresno. Bill. Well, Catholic social justice teaching tells us that there is a preferable option for the poor and vulnerable, and nobody is more poor than the homeless. I'm also told that Fresno has the second highest rate of homelessness in the whole country, right after Tampa, Florida. So it's a serious problem, and one that I'd like to help our homeless brothers and sisters with. Jimmy. I think it's important, Jim, that we stir our community to compassion. Jim. Well, I've always had a big interest in social justice, but I think what was really jazzing me up lately is uh, Pope Francis, like a commander in chief who yeah. has gotten out of the situation room, got on the front lines, is ready to battle with the, with the people in, uh, you know, with the goal of social justice and love. We have some images, Bill, that you picked. Could you give us a little bit of the history of this committee, its purpose, the whole project, based on perhaps that a wake-up moment with that image of the demolition? On January 28, 2010, the city closed an encampment at F Street in Ventura. Coincidentally, we had a uh, forum on homelessness in Fresno at the Newman Center that night. And Father Jim Rood, the director of social justice ministry for the diocese, went back to the bishop and said, shouldn't we be doing something? And the bishop said, yes, Jim, do something and let me know what it is. So we called together a group of people from Merced, Madeira, and Fresno to decide on a diocesan response. And that ended up starting the Fresno area with what we call the bishop's committee, uh, the Bishop Steinbach Homeless Advocacy Committee. Um, we started in Fresno, and it's getting time we expand to the rest of the diocese, but we haven't so far. We do have a poster board that we might be able to use as a backdrop as the three of you chip in and tell us something about the purpose of this group, its mission, its function, its whole modality. Well, one of the big things is uh, building awareness, and um, one of uh, this this year in February, we uh, had uh, Bishop Ochoa uh, declare February as uh, Homeless Awareness Month. And during that time, we had pastoral letter was given to all the parishes. They were publishing various articles about the homeless. Uh, we had several presentations on KNXT TV. We had a theater reader's uh, little program dev uh, developed by Kate Casa, who is a member of our committee. And then we had a, um, an essay contest for the, the schools in the diocese uh, about homelessness. And we hope to uh, do this again next year. One of the uh, great things that's been an outgrowth from the committee is that it's gathered and been a convener for a number of um, advocates and workers throughout our city and county. And uh, we've had people in the same room from various faiths, from different government and county agencies, a number of different churches, um, private individuals, folks who had their own testimony shared, folks who were homeless themselves at one point in time and have uh, found their way back to uh, solvency, if you will. And uh, so it's been a tremendous convener of great people, resources, and ideas. Um, what 
would you want to say, the three of you, maybe Bill could start, about the seriousness of the situation at present? This is an update. We've done this program, as they say, before. What would be the update on it and the seriousness based on the point-in-time survey? We don't really, I don't think the results of the point-in-time survey have really been published yet. Um, the initial count that I heard is about a thousand less than a year ago, but I don't believe it. Um, for example, one woman who worked on it said she interviewed a guy who said he spent the night before in an abandoned building with 12 people and he's the only one who got counted. So who knows how many there are. I've always had 5,000 living on the street another 15,000 sleeping on somebody's couch or something. So the problem is huge and it stretches from well, almost all of the homeless I meet in Fresno tell me that they come from the Central Valley. So it really is a reflection of the uh, very low employment rates in the Valley, of the po poverty that's in the Valley. It's very much a result of poverty. But it includes mental health issues, addiction issues, uh, it's veterans coming back from the war who can't adjust, it's foster children who suddenly turn 18 and are supposed to be independent. A lot of them end up on the street. So it's just a whole rainbow of reasons why you can end up homeless and it's very serious and with huge numbers of people affected. We have some images that have been put together again just <coughs> sampling of the many photos that show the situation. I wonder if we could see the next four of them and Jim and Jimmy could perhaps share what they are knowing is going on, what we can do about it. Well, that's under the bridge um, downtown. And um, I was there, that was probably my initiation into this whole movement. And I discovered that the homeless um, they have encampments, we all know about that. You may not know how much a community they become, including memorial stones to people who have died on the streets. You know, families are there or they become families based on their own common need uh, for, for society. Um, in some of those encampments they have basically house rules. Um, there's some levels of protection. And of course, um, anytime you gather people together like that, they grow tight bonds with each other. So that, that's what made the, uh, the raising of the encampments somewhat egregious because it was actually the home of many people. Another interesting thing, Bill and I went down last Saturday, I believe it was, and uh, toured that area. And uh, the homeless church is back underneath there by the bridge and uh, uh, in that area. And again, uh, very nicely laid out, very clean and very neat. So I was glad to see that at least they have a place back. Pastor How? Jimmy mentioned that uh, the people really form tight communities and structures and rules in their encampments. And one of the problems when the encampments keep getting closed is that people get dispersed, communities get broken up, the structures and the rules change, and the standard of living goes way down. As bad as it is to live in a good encampment, it's much worse today than it was two years ago. There's a website that we might like to post here. There's also a way to reach Bill. Um, what will people find at Help in Fresno? And what is it, Bill, that you would wish that um, this, the, our viewership, what would you want us to be doing with you? The website helpinfresno.org uh, really basically is a listing of uh, services that are available by different areas in the city. And so if you know a homeless person who needs help or you need help, go check out what's available in the neighborhood you live in. Um, what we would like from people, in terms of the Bishop's Committee, we would like a representative from every parish in the Fresno area to meet with us every first and third Saturday and be a liaison between us and the individual parishes. Um, we're also developing needs navigators to help uh, the homeless with everything from getting IDs to getting to appointments to moving into apartments and uh, that will take a great number of people. 
If there are 5,000 homeless on the street, we probably need 10,000 volunteers to be mentors and moral support for them. Um, so that's the next big thing is the needs navigators. Pastor Jimmy and Jim, being members of this committee and being <coughs> there week by week, twice a month, seeing the progress, what would you say is the main growth of that committee over the past two and a half years? What is it that you've been most proud of doing or committed to uh, continuing to do? Well, I mentioned before the, uh, the power of being a convener of the resources in the city. You know, just the, raising the awareness about not just a problem, but that there are many people around the Central Valley who have answered the call. And uh, we would have, we'd meet some people in these summits that were just incredible. Um, I'm thinking about the firefighters, for instance, that we met who are looking to do something to help the homeless. And uh, other churches we heard about, Hope Sanger, for instance, and, and so many that we can mention. And what we do is we trade ideas. And uh, I have a, a, a younger church, and we just moved into an area there, are a lot of homeless in that area. Some of the ideas I heard in those summits and through this committee, we can utilize in our church. So it's extremely valuable for that reason. Jim Nelson, can you tell us maybe uh, some of the parishes that have really been front and center with the committee, without saying this is exhaustive, but I do know that some of the local parishes have a stronger membership in the committee. What would some of these parishes be? Well, the um, uh, St. Paul's Catholic Newman Center is one. Um, uh, St. Uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and uh, St. Uh, Anthony Padua. We ha have members now from there too. But um, I think one of the other big things that we are trying to do and need to do is organize ourselves in within zip codes. Uh, that brings the attention down to a very particular neighborhood and we can tend to concentrate all of our efforts uh, within those zip code groups and just have better and effective, more efficient uh, uh, services. Mm -hmm. And that would bring out the ecumenical quality of your committee because obviously it's not the Catholic parishes, it's rather all the different congregations. What are some of the communities that you're so excited about teaming with? Because um, we're gonna see Hope Lutheran in the next section, but what are some other churches that we're working together with? Well, Community College Congregational, uh, Islamic Center, who else? Breaking Free Revival right. Center, and then um, some of the the uh, West Fresno Ministerial Alliance uh, Association, which is a number of churches in the uh, Southwest Corridor as well as downtown are involved as well. I, and think, some, I think we've had 66 various congregations represented at the summit conferences, 140 people. Um, no, it was 160 people, I think, the first mm -hmm. time. Uh, so it's a, a large number of congregations, houses of worship that have been involved and are involved and hopefully we can get them all working together by zip codes in their own neighborhoods. You know, we have to take our break right now. I wonder if um, Jim had any final thought before he is replaced by Vicki. Well, I would just hope that we can reach out to other people to get uh, more volunteers to help us uh, in, the, in this work because it will take a lot of people. Thank you very much. We're going to take our break right now, but don't go anywhere because we'll be back for the second half of our first program on Homeless in 60 seconds. KNXT TV is proud to say thank you to all its viewers who have given their support for over 25 years. And only through your support is KNXT able to provide spiritual and informative programming. Please remember KNXT and your long-term support through wills, bequests, trust and plan giving your gift is important to the future of catholic television help preserve the strength of knxt's message based on the teachings of christ keep knxt in your future plans hello again and welcome to the second half of our program on the homeless committee the bishop john steinbach homeless advocacy committee giving a an update on their ministry among us again we have bill simon who is the chair Pastor Jimmy Foote, one of the strong members and a, the Reverend uh, Minister at the um, Breaking Free Revival Center, 
And across from me right now, a new member is Vicki Poncius from Hope Lutheran Church. She's here to tell us, first of all, Vicki, why you are personally committed to this project and maybe a little bit about how you became involved in the committee after all that work you're doing at Hope Lutheran Food Pantry. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, yes, I think uh, the best way to s sum up why I'm so interested in homeless issues in Fresno, I've been an educator for many years involved in adult education, and I've learned over the years that there are so many reasons why people are where they are. Maybe why they didn't finish school, why they don't have a job, just a, just a lot of reasons. Uh, and one phrase, of course, that always sticks in my mind, and that is, they're by the grace of God. We never know uh, what tomorrow might bring. Um, who knows where we might be? And if we find ourselves in a very difficult situation, where could we go for help? And I think that's one of the reasons why I've gotten so involved in this whole process. Uh, you mentioned Hope Lutheran. Yes, at Hope Lutheran, we have a lot of things that are going on, including our food pantry. And as we have more time in our discussion, we can certainly talk to a lot of uh, what is going on there. I became involved as a representative uh, in that we do offer the weekly showers and we do serve a great number of homeless people uh, in our area. Thank you. You know, looking at the three of you, you represent the um, first three places that we had summits. It began at the Newman Center, then it evolved into Hope Lutheran, then it reverted back to the Breaking Free Revival Center finally at the UU Church. I wonder if you could start telling us something about those first three summits, why they were, how they were, the results, how they led one into the other. So why don't we begin with a chronology? And Bill, why don't you begin by telling us about the Newman Center's first summit? Well, it did grow out of the Bishop's Homeless Advocacy Committee in that we said, the Catholics in this city are not by themselves going to solve the problem of homelessness. We need the whole faith community. So we organized an interfaith committee that put together a summit. And we met at uh, the Newman Center just to kind of bring us all up to date on what's happening and figure out where to go. And that's when we came up with the idea of the zip code approach where we would meet together in neighborhood groups. Um, the second summit at Hope Lutheran was basically just to follow up on the first one. And maybe Vicki can tell us about her own church's commitment to this. Uh, yes, certainly. As we became involved, as uh, Bill said, with the, the zip codes, we basically followed a map of the area of Fresno that uh, has divided the city into 10, 10 groups. Within each of these groups, we have our zip codes, and that's where the notion came from uh, our zip code groups. We met uh, primarily to talk with each other and to learn more what does go on within these zip codes. We are very curious uh, knowing that your church does some things, uh, the Catholic parishes are certainly involved in a lot of activities, but we wanted to know more what is going on and we feel that through our zip codes we have accomplished that. Uh, we've learned that there are, of course, the food pantries. We've learned about uh, thrift shops uh, that provide uh, interview appropriate clothing. Uh, we've learned about a number of resources that are available throughout our zip code areas. And we'll continue to bring more folks into our involvement in this. Now, in May of 2012, we began with the first meeting at the Newman Center. Uh, a month later in June, we were already at Hope Lutheran. In September of 2012, Pastor Jimmy hosted. Can you tell us, Jimmy, about what that was for your church and what it was that was accomplished at that third summit, which meant to build on the success of the other two? You know, we had uh, the head of the Department of Social Services there as well as many churches, and not just the uh, uh, Catholic and Protestant churches, but as well as the Islamic Center was represented in others. Quite a few people were there. For me, it's exciting uh, when you have the community coming together and facing a particular issue. And I, I think at that meeting, there was a lot of energy in that room. And so we were very excited that some people got on board. We heard from Marcia Scott, for instance, one who I alluded to earlier, 
who had been homeless herself. Yeah. And when people heard that story, in fact, the result of her sharing her story was she got a job from the Department of Social Services because she was at that place. So here was a, a woman who had been on the street, got off the street, got educated, showed up, shared her story in front of us all and wound up getting a job where she leverages her experience to help other homeless and other needy people in the community. It was that type of synergy and I really am an advocate for when people get together, good things can happen. Now we took a break between the third and the fourth summits but the fourth summit at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Fresno was another great success. We're going to watch it now for two minutes, and I'd like our panel to please just talk over it, over the energy that was at the UU Church and why it was so important. Go ahead. At the, the fourth summit, um, we began by listening to a presentation about the Bethesda Project which is a proposal from the rescue mission to put, to have churches actually house the homeless and offer them services for periods of three months, I think it is. But we also then had a panel of uh, people from Fresno Housing Authority and the county to talk about how we can actually get involved and that's developing into um, the Needs Navigators program and other things. We had invited the city, but because of the lawsuits, they did not participate. Um, and so we've kind of been building since Summit 4 towards involvement with the Fresno Madera Continuum of Care and the county and the Fresno Housing Authority. Anybody else? It was a tremendous meeting, and it got a little... Um, I won't say chippy, it just got very animated yes. as we talked about some of the uh, issues and you know you keep having an influx of new people there. I'm looking at some of the faces. Uh, they weren't at previous summits, some of those, and um, it was great to have that new energy there. One of the topics that was discussed <clears throat> had to do with the best ways for all of, collectively, all of us to deal with um, our homeless folks out on the streets and the suggestions Remember those suggestions as to not uh, be giving money. Uh, the feeling is that too many of the folks are involved with drugs and that by uh, giving the money we are somehow supporting the habits. Okay. One thing that was very um, important to see is not only did you have a, a presentation and then a panel discussion, but also they broke off, as you did see them before, in groups by zip code. And how successful or how important are you seeing the continuing effort to make the zip code project work? I, you know, what, to me, the key thing with all this is, as a community, we have to stop stepping over the homeless as we go on our way to church, work, or whatever, go about our lives. In the small groups, you've got to continue to stir up the awareness and talk about how to, again, raise awareness and stir compassion in people. That's the key because somebody challenged us, well, do you have an answer for this? And we say, well, you know what, there's a myriad of answers because there's a myriad of problems. The main thing is if we are all working together with real concern, real compassion, um, then we bring our ideas together, we learn from each other, and we stop stepping over the problem and ignoring it and begin to embrace it. So in the small groups, uh, we talked about that very issue. What's the heart of this whole problem? How can we approach it? How, how can we help you solve what you see, et cetera, et cetera? There are two final pictures that we um, have chosen that we'd like to show. And then we want to ask our panel to talk about something that's been broached briefly but not really discussed, needs, navigation, and your need for volunteers. Did you want to address anything that you're going to see in the next two pictures? And then please start describing what is a needs navigator anyways? Oh, that's a picture when they close the encampments, that's all the carts lined up going down G Street. They let the people leave them there briefly. Um, 
Um, it just shows how many people got dislocated that day. Um, and that's from the uh, street church, Pastor Ray Polk's church, his homeless ministry, which has sprung up again about a block away from where it was. Hmm. But uh, in terms of needs navigators, we're really trying to define that at the moment. We're meeting with Laura Moreno from um, Department of Social Services as a li liaison with the Fresno Madera Continuum of Care. We have a meeting Friday when we're trying to pin down a little more exactly what it means. For us, the idea came from a group in Merced that has worked as needs navigators but it's a pretty informal approach there where they just meet some people on the street who need help, are able to get them into housing, and do what they need to support them. They have three or four people at a time that they're helping. Um, in Fresno, if we work through the housing authority or through the continuum of care, we could have hundreds and hundreds of people we're working with at the same time, and so we need to figure out how to coordinate it all, how to communicate, where to get the people who will actually do the work of offering moral support and help to get to appointments and to get IDs and to move into an apartment. We need to develop all that. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that is seeming to be so simple is actually collecting something like toilet paper. But what we'd like to do is let you know where this is a, an important need. It's a, a, a really obvious need. And this is where you can be uh, delivering this. If you would pay attention to that address, corner of West uh, Van Ness and McKinley, the Fresno Center for Nonviolence is another one of these partners by making their, their office a site for things that might be needed for the homeless. The other last thought we'd like to do is the screen that reaches out to Bill Simon's phone number and his email and the website. Anything you'd like to say? Final thought, Vicki? Yeah, I, I would say that the website is giving us an opportunity to pull together the resources that we are discovering through our zip code meetings. Uh, the decision was made that once we've learned a lot about what's being offered, what's available, now what do we do with it? And that's where the website came from. It's a very simple, uh, easy to use website that lists a lot of information on services that are available for our homeless community. I want to remind all of you that this program is going to be very soon on our Facebook channel. It's going to be there with our YouTube programming. All of these things are able to be seen again and again. We want to thank our panel today from the Bishop Steinbach Homeless Advocacy Committee and we want to let you know that next week we'll be meeting with young people who will be telling us their understanding of the homeless situation from their own study and visit to F Street. Till next week, God bless. <laughs>